It is time, once again, to lock your doors, shut your windows, strap yourself into your favorite comfy chair, and tune out and tune into The Naked Zombie. <gasps> we survived. That's right. 2012 has been and gone. The 21st of December has left us and we are still here. Sorry, everybody. Just condolences first. And you are listening to The Naked Zombie back for 2013. And joining me in the arena is Liam. How are you? And Wadzi. Good evening. How are you guys? We're Great. back. We survived the, the uh, apocalypse. Yeah, back the past the line of the and... And close, the, close shave from the meteorite at the moment. Asteroid. Yeah, 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 yeah was meteorite. Quite a bit closer than what they thought, actually. Well, that's all right. We're saying we still got about twenty-five years or something <laughs> until we get obliterated by that one. So. Oh, twenty-five years now. Oh, what is it? Twenty thirty-six or something? Oh, it's due to uh, due back to yeah, blast to pieces. I should be able to so. retire then, and so that should work. No, you quite. should be able to afford to retire. <laughs> <then. laughs> I'll still be working this shit all over. Anyway, so we are, look, a happy new year, everybody, and look, and thank you for joining us again and being so patient, waiting for the zombie to come back. Uh, Andrew will be joining us in future episodes, of course. He's on a hot date tonight at the movies, I think. Woohoo. Uh, with his mum, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Enough so said. bad in so many ways. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. I think he's gone out. But anyway, we miss our Andrew, and uh, he'll be back joining us very, very shortly on the other night's adventures. Now, uh, we've got a few things we want to touch on tonight's show, being back, because like, lots happened over the Christmas break, and we've been received lots of emails and lots of information that come through and stuff like that. Before we do anything, I'd just like to make a statement. I, Brad Scott... I am so shitted off where I work at the moment. I'm currently <laughs> looking for a new job. That's right. Brad Scott, the host of Naked Zombie Radio, has had a gut full of where he works. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. Oh, look, dude, I'm seriously, I'm over it. I am so over it. Um, I'm, I'm well, 41 years of age now. Change jobs. Uh, yeah, easy. Simple. Yeah, easy. What, 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 what can a talented hack do except work in a warehouse <laughs> <laughs> and host a very lame radio show? Uh, but that's it. Yeah. So I, am, uh, I actually got my um, RSA and RSG licenses. I did some learned. I become learned. Learned. Over the uh, Christmas break, which is uh, responsible alcohol serving license and gaming license. Mm. So um, I, I now legally can work in a pub. But because I've got no real experience, I can't get a job in a pub. You'd so be running yeah. your own mobile pub, <laughs> six-pack of beer course. out the boot of the car. and Yeah, well, I can run it out of the boot of the Ford, and yeah. I think they'll work. A little, little card table, a <laughs> couple of games of poker and whatnot. So, and, and also, I just saw I had a bit of a... went away back home to Gladstone to see my folks, and I actually had a bit of a flutter on the pokies, as you do when I go to the pub, and I won 200 bucks. Whoa. Yeah, I put in like four dollars and one two hundred and walked straight out the door. Again. You, you use your, your, only way to do it. Uh, use your you, RSG experience yeah, to yeah, rig the I'm all, I'm rig the all the legal aspects of it now. Uh, the scary part was is this lady that was playing the machine. I won the money on. She she decided to. I was just just walked down. I see her and she was like losing miserably. And I just, yeah, she sat down and one next, and I said, well, you're not playing the you mind? I said, no, no, it's no good. You're wasting your money, all the rest of it. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and two hits later, I walked out with 200 bucks, and you should have seen the look of disgust and hatred Don't I got. Don't think it vile. They go, oh, man, this, this little old lady, I swear she wants to stab me in the eye of the spoon. She probably wants to do more than that. Yeah, to take me home. Put some sexy tie. <laughs> Two hundred bucks. Oh, some drugs probably wants to take you out into the car park and yeah. hit you with a brick right? yeah. in a handbag. Yeah, <laughs> Two hundred dollars. Yeah, you like. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a thought. No, hey, I'm a modern guy. No, I'm not. He's looking uh, for a new job. So. Yeah, I am. Looking, yeah, going to pimp myself out. Yeah, I think I'll live on thirty cents a month, um, and that's when I have to pay them. Uh, okay, so lots happened with the naked zombie over the break. We've going through look, just to clarify a few things start off the bat before we get into our usual madness and anarchy watch we usually go out go, 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 go on with you tell i haven't been on the radio for a while um the naked zombie tours right they are going to happen at this stage we are still waiting for we've just got to go over a fear of the dark yeah, the fear of the dark is uh, yeah like yeah we, we don't like what's in his poopy pants when something goes wrong and <laughs> 
Yeah, sorry, I, I thought, sorry, I mentioned you the. You said the, you weren't going to say anything about the poopy pants. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, no, the, the uh, tours of Boggo Road. Um, we are still in the process of waiting to get the information through on that, and costings and everything like that before we can actually make a start and waiting for all some other stuff to come through and yada yada and goes on and on. But in saying that. Uh, the Brisbane tours, uh, the city tours. Yep. Uh, Liam's going to fill you in a bit more about that shortly. Uh, we are going to start doing that very, very shortly. We haven't forgotten about it. We've been spending the last five weeks, six weeks. Well, actually, we've spent the last six months nutting all this out um, to make it good and viable for people. We're in the later stages of it now to get the tools up and going. Um, and stuff like that, so it should make it fun and exciting for everyone who has a sense of humour and a willingness to learn about history. That's right. It's okay, a... you may speak now. You can tell people about how awesome our tours are going to be. No, they're going to be excellent. So, yeah, I guess not so much a ghost tour, but just a bit of a horrible history lesson of Brisbane. So, yep. yeah, take people through and, yeah, a lot of sort of macabre history and some of the darker aspects of Brisbane that no one's aware of, mm. uh, especially when they're, you know, walking down the Queen Street Mall and places like that, you know, on their way to do a bit of shopping. And they don't know what's actually happened or what's actually taken place there. In the same boat, we'll be having a special tour of uh, Wadsey's bathroom as well that's that's part of the horrible that's pretty scary tour, tour. yes that's yeah. yes people have gone in and never come out again so we know that much not in the same way anyway <laughs> well no they just haven't come out again they, they, they have but in a stretcher and with a blanket over their head uh, so that's happening that's coming up in the next couple of weeks so i'd say yep um, so if you listen to I'm this in the clean future the bathroom up then yeah, you have to no. Don't clean up, man. That's part of the whole idea. <laughs> <laughs> the scarier the better. You just let it go, man. If it's mellow, if it's if, if it's yeah. yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, don't bother flushing it down. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. you, what? Yeah. Use what? use a coat hanger before you hit the flush button. <laughs> <laughs> coat hanger would be, be like oh, I want Mr. Whippy, wouldn't it? <laughs> Oh, we've gone straight into the toilet humour, don't I? I love it. I've missed it so much. So we are going to go over a few aspects of tonight what we're doing and what we want to achieve for 2013 doing the show. Now, our, our, our aspirations are at this stage. We're going to do a couple of hours on a Thursday night, do the shows, and we're going to start doing more and more shows as time progresses. Like, we're slowly trying to work ourselves out. Well, yes, as sorry. we get more bad jokes, we can fill up more. Yeah, as we get more bad jokes and more hate mail, we can... Uh, we can Prattle on. Prattle on. Actually, I got a funny bit of hate mail. Actually, I got to, got to mention this. I I put up a um a picture on on the on the, the, the uh, fan the Facebook fan site, and it was for my friend Amanda. I've known this Amanda Schaefer for since primary school, grade one. Yeah, we've been mates ever since. Yeah, you know? I mean we've yeah. always kept in contact, and we actually lived next door to each other when I, when we were like in our early twenties. So I've known her for years. Anyway, so she's in the cats, right? And I put this thing up. I know if you've seen it, it says, this, yeah, this cat says, um, well, the cat says, oh, now I can buy food online. I don't need humans anymore. Yeah, I saw that. Anyway, yeah. humans are spelt wrong, right, for starters. I knew that straight from the bat. Yeah. And anyway, so some monkey decides to get on there. I haven't taken it off. Some monkey says, oh, maybe you need to go to elementary school lessons or, or something like that. It's like, mate, it's, it's a friggin'. It's not even mine. No. I just stole you it off. Stole it. <laughs> I stole it off the internet. Like, clearly not I'm a regular getting... viewer of I has cheeseburger then. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm being told I need to go and have elementary school lessons again on spelling. Uh, do I care? Not really. <laughs> so but but they've actually. Elementary? Hey? Could he spell elementary? Yeah, elementary was... But no, no, he's he, spelling okay. except, except the punctuation. Well, I was going to say he found the cat on the bed ordering food through the laptop. Was That was okay. Yeah, that that was yeah, okay. That was but that, that humans, was completely believable. <laughs> yeah. Nothing wrong with that at but, all. But how dare you spell humans wrong? <laughs> humans were spelt wrong. I'm thinking. Well, I knew it when I said as I read it, but I just I just don't care because I thought it was funny and mm. it was for my mate and I thought it was appreciate. So if you're the person listening to this, I don't really give a rat's. <laughs> 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 I do not care. I don't even know their name. I should look it up now. Bugger it. It's hard to type it. with poor, so. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. You, it you, is, you hit, hit multiple you, buttons at the same time. Yeah, I mesh keys with face. <laughs> Bitch, it was the dog. It was. It was the dog. It was Max. Damn you, Max. Anyway, so yeah, so I got a bit of that. What else happened? Yeah, I went out in Dad's new boat and he hates my guts now because I actually caught a nice cod and he didn't catch anything except for eels and um, catfish. So the old man you went smoked out. smoked you? Hey, well, Dad retired. The old man's retired now and he bought this beautiful 
thirty or thousand dollar friggin' boat to go up the river in. He bought a new four wheel drive, as you do when you retire. Understandable, but he'd been waiting for like six weeks for me to get home to take it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. The old man wanted to do that. Wait till his son got there, and anyway, we launched it. The boat, beautiful boat, runs. Did you put the bungs in? Hey, did you put the bungs in? Yeah, bungs were in. They're the ones <laughs> that don't fall out. They're actually, yeah, they're pretty good. Okay. No, everything, everything was great. We we pulled up near the mangroves up the Clypeer River and that, and yeah, I threw me line out. And within, I think, a matter of minutes, I pulled up a 47-centimetre cod. Nice rock cod. Beautiful cod. Beautiful fish. And I thought, this is great. Two, and the old man said, oh, this is the spot. Two catfish later, a couple of years later. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might go home, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so I caught a couple of nice fish, and, and Dad you now doesn't talk to me at all. Um, so that's great. So we did that. Uh, what else? Non-interesting, non-paranormal pop culture news can I come up with set for me I'm looking for a new job and uh, yeah so if anyone out there wants to hire Brad um, that's that pays lots of money and, 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 and in Brisbane and they can know they're getting sheer awesomeness of talent um, but in not basically necessarily working fields <laughs> no, nothing to do with the employment side of, yeah give me a call you'll find me details give me a job um, no, but don't say give me a job why not ask them if they have a job no, just give me one. Just give me, just give me money. Yeah. May no, I have a job, still, please? Yeah, give me, give me, give me now. It's not all about you, Brad. <laughs> it should be about me. No, I'm not suffering. It's about us as well, you know. We're over here. Yeah, I know, but you, you are cool people. You're like, you, you got, you got cool jobs. Mm. I'm more sad here. Oh, sorry. Hey, how's work going, fellas? Good. Yeah, Good. great. Love my job. Yeah, get stuffed. <laughs> um, anyway, so, I don't care. <laughs> you taste like grape. Um, you are? Yeah, what? Um, so that's about it. So what other exciting news have we got, gentlemen? What else is happening in the big bad world of uh, Christmas break and stuff before we go on with normal? Well, I was pretty relaxed, actually. I didn't do a lot at all. A couple that's of day trips and... Yeah? Yeah. Get, too much. Ride too your much. bike? Get on your bike? No, I haven't, actually. I haven't been on the bike since... Um, November. My God. Yes. I'll have to start doing that. Yes. It's a, he's got this beautiful, beautiful 1920s style. What is it? A, what is it? A, a, a Yamaha Suzuki thing? Yamaha or? FJ1200. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. It's not 1918. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a bike back. Isn't that cool? Look at me. Uh, You're just jealous. I am jealous. Actually, that's one thing I want to do is get my bike license too so I can ride a big Harley. Um, oh, God. No, I won't say anything. What? I look good, <laughs> big geeky guy in a Harley. Yeah, you will. Yeah, I look awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wind uh, blowing in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Leave my hair alone. <laughs> yes, I've had a haircut. It's all gone again. Uh, people have made comments. Yeah, bowling ball, all the rest of it. Shiny on top, shit underneath. And if you hear that banging and clanging noise in the background, don't stress about it. I've got the blinds open because <laughs> it's frigging hot. It's paranormal it's cool activity. Actually, sure. You two talk among yourselves and I'll fix this up. Why? Because it's a nice breeze system. coming in, though. Yeah, no, no, I'm going to move the blinds back. So oh, okay. Provide some I wish you put pants on before you get up. Stop it. <laughs> what? What's it going to do with someone like it? So, what did Liam get up to? I didn't get up to great much, actually. I, yeah, only, what, it's five weeks ago, started a new job, so that's interesting. Yeah. Well, not but really. Paying, not yeah. really interesting to anyone else, but. Yeah, I think, yeah it's, so. I think it's awesome that you've got a really cool job, man. Yeah, so I worked through Christmas. So I got my got my Christmas and Boxing Day and New Year's Day off, but worked in between. So poor baby, it's a hard life. Someone's got to do it. Yeah, someone's got to keep the country going. That's I'm right. Liam instead of Brad. Yeah, yeah I'm, damn I'm straight. Propping I'm, it up single handedly. I'm getting sick of working in those forty foot containers, ripping out friggin' machinery <laughs> in forty five degree heat. Not good. I actually got um, one of Chopper Reed's books. You know, Mark. Brandon Chopper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very interesting reading that is. Yeah. Super reading that is. Oh, yeah. The man's a dude, eh? Seriously. Oh, he's, 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 he's a cool dude. He is a cool dude. He's a cool dude. He's actually done quite a bit for charity. If you don't know who Chopper Reed is, Chopper Reed was a real bad ass. Bad ass. Notorious. Notorious stand standover man. Um, the poor bloke had both his ears removed. He did Literally. it himself. He did, he, no, he didn't when they cut off? No, he, he did it he, he himself. Did it himself. He, he removed he his asked, own... Well, he asked someone to cut, cut them off in prison. Well, I didn't know that. So, yeah, he actually removed his own ears. Then. He removed his own ears as a defiance to authority and to prove that he was impervious to pain. 
is the man. Put it this way. Anyway, he has done a lot for charity. He, he, he's he's written children's books too. He's written children's books. He's actually quite a talented guy. So good on you, Mr. Reed. And how's the book? Good. Oh, brilliant! I'm on the second one now. Yeah. Yeah. First one was fantastic. You want to give us a bit of a quick rundown on the Australian icon, Mr. Reed? Um, Just a quick one. He worked out. Well, he got National Geographic's in jail. Yeah. That's really matter. He worked out or found out that if you get rat faeces and human faeces, mix it together and cultivate it, it starts growing a fungus. And in this fungus grows mushrooms. And these mushrooms are highly toxic. So he did this in prison. And he got his faeces, did this, and threw it in the cook, in the food. 90% of the prison came down with a, a, stra- a strand of typhoid. <laughs> That's how us Australians do it, man. <laughs> we don't mess about. Because <laughs> he was going awesome. serving all the food and he had access to all the yeah, yeah. meals. Yep, 90% of the prison came down with typhoid, a strain of typhoid. That's that's amazing. Oh, and you've got to entertain ones. yourself somehow, oh, don't you? He was loving it. He was loving it. Man. Yeah. We can say it. Australians are just the coolest. Hey, we just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, so you had it. So you were reading a book. You had a good time away. Yeah, no, I stayed home this year. Stayed home this yep. year. Didn't head over home. And no, no, I was on fire. Yeah, well, we know that. Yeah, it's, it's, look. Anyway, look. If you are listening, of course, and we are think- fighting them. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are thinking of what you know, our fellow countrymen, uh, who have you know, it's just some, you know, please, you know, if, open your wallets, open your hearts, and. Uh, Donate and do whatever you can to help out your fellow Aussies in this really shit time. You yeah, know, they helped us when uh, we were underwater, so... Yeah, no, seriously. Time to pay mean, back. And it's also... It's, it's happening a lot around Australia, New South Wales yeah. and places well, like that. We're, full circle, too, isn't it? It's this, pretty much exactly this time two years ago, oh, Brisbane yeah. was... Underwater. Got underwater. Four or five metres underwater. Yeah, and know, now all of a sudden, you know, South us South and New South Wales and Victoria and South Australia yeah. and Tasmania are all burning down. So. Well, even Bribie Island. They've had to evacuate a bit of Bribie Island just yeah. outside of oh, Brisbane. Yeah, you should see it up my way at the moment. It's... You, barely see down the highways and that's just thick smoke it has been for the last couple of yeah, days so it's, it's, it's horrible looking out the doors and you're seeing the smoke and that the other day you can smell it so yeah. it's really affecting the asthmatics and that but good thing i'm tough ish you just have your bag of cement every day yeah, yeah still, still waiting to go to the toilet <laughs> <laughs> is that what i haven't been doing for last six months? okay uh but yeah so that's why we're doing that as well so there's lots going on um and we're going to talk about so what are subjects we're going to talk about tonight we have nothing prepared as usual. <laughs> Situation normal. Yeah, well, I must say, big shout out to Geek Speak, the guys there. They've they've got a new show out as well. Yeah. Uh, they kicked off again. Also, Ghost of Oz. They're up and going again. Their radio show, uh, Paranormal Guide, doing really well. Friends of ours. How's uh, the uh, editing of um, was it Bellevue House? You're, you're just you're just swearing at me now. No, I'm not. No, I said it nicely. <laughs> Look at him have a stab. Yeah, yeah just, just have a stab. So yeah, well, while I was having a nice relaxing time off over Christmas, why didn't you do the video? Yeah, why didn't you have done it? No, yet? I didn't, didn't ask Brad. why. Well, I said, look. how is it going? It's going. It's slowly. going. That's good. That's good. It's, uh, I can only do bits and pieces. I did go away for about a week and a half. Yeah, don't expect you to be here the whole time. Oh, yeah, yeah, just just most of it to edit the video. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, do your job, Brad. Yeah, yeah. You, get paid you for it. boast suck. about all these things and say I'll have it up. Yeah, I know. And uh, when? Would you like a nice mushroom dish? I'm <laughs> 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 oh, sure I can milk a couple for you. Um, but yeah, no. Look, uh, information's on the computer. I'm halfway through editing. Like I said, these things take time because I just I, do not I wasn't putting have... the pressure on. All I did yeah, was yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You bullshit. You, you, you don't, oh, well, how can how can I get how can I get Brad, Brad off, back face? after the the poopy pants story? <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Well. Uh, but yeah. So Liam. Ignoring Wadsy now for the rest of the night. Well, what have you got for us in information wise, mate? William should read this out. Um, he pointed it out. I don't know. I don't have a great mind. Well, what's that? What's the got there in front of me now? William can read it out. Oh, he's just moving the computer around. No, uh, I'm moving the screen. Oh, it's different. God. Oh, God, my brain hurts. Go. On the, on the weird, weird world news. Yeah, yeah, go on. Let's see. We've got something for us. It says viewers of a Swedish news channel got more than they bargained for while watching a sober report on Syria's president Bashir al-Assad as a porn film played on a studio screen in the background. Like it. So the incident took place during a Monday broadcast on 24-hour <laughs> Swedish news channel TV4 News as the presenter was interviewing the station's Moscow correspondent. 
As the journalists discussed Russia's support for the Syrian regime, a pornographic film began playing on one of the television screens situated behind the anchor. At first, I realised I was looking at a naked woman and it quickly became clear she was having sex. Swedish news website, the local, quoted one viewer as saying, The erotic film, though blurry, was visible behind the presenter for about ten minutes during the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> TV4 news editor Andreas Hagland confirmed that the adult film had been shown live but claimed that they didn't mean that a member... But that didn't mean that a member of staff was actively watching the movie. He said it was likely... S- He said it was likely screen... That doesn't make any sense. Said it was likely screen was likely tied to a computer server elsewhere in the studio connected to other channels operated by MT4. Swedish media was quick to report the gaff. I reckon it was put there as a joke. No, hell no. I'd I'd, I'd do something like that. You would. I would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's amusing that it played for 10 minutes and no one, no one, no one it. well, probably, I think they probably realised quite quickly, but oh. no one wanted to point it out. They wanted to see how it ended. <laughs> the, their hands were pretty busy. Happily. <laughs> <laughs> happy ending. Ta-da, happy ending. Oh, and send all your third world Asians out there. Send all your hate mail to um, <laughs> Wadsley, please. Um, that was a terrible yeah. impersonation, man. Seriously, you got you got to stop doing I'd, stuff like that. I was going to say, this is a doozy. I read this well, one the other the, night. What do you can do this one? Right. I thought it was rather amusing. A lightning strike has blown the breasts of one of man's iconic tributes to Northern Territory women, literally. Stone Masonry... Stone masonry boss Tim Finlay was standing 50 metres from his voluptuous hand-carved Venus de Milo when a flash of white lightning and an almighty kaboom sent sent stone flying through the air. Mr Finlay, who carved the statue as a tribute to N2 women, said he was amazed her 30 kilos breast had survived the phenomenon. There was a clap of thunder and the sculpture blew up like like a rocket launcher had hit it. Everything disintegrated but the breasts. The boobies are okay. The boobies are okay. There go, the boobies are stone boobies. See, boobies See? are awesome, man. Plastic surgery. Does it all the time. Mate, they're made out of granite by sound. <laughs> <laughs> they could be artificially filled. Oh, God, here we go. Oh, Everything just discriminated just but the breasts. <laughs> just That's down, political down. incorrectness. Wadsy's got written all <laughs> 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 Don't believe in all that PC stuff. No, it's no. all going crap anyway. Keep going. What was that all, all that is left is what's under her hips. The 1.5 metre high sculpture made of local porcelainite was perched on a 6 metre steel reinforced column. Shattered stone was strewn about the small courtyard at Finlay's Stone Masonry near the Stuart Highway at Yarrawonga, where the top half of the headless Venus, headless Venus was obliterated about on Friday, but her breast withstood the eight metre drop to the stone stone mural below. Only one nip- nipple was damaged. Well, Mr. That's, that's okay, we can handle that. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> Mr. Finlay said he had not yet disclosed the fate of the surviving breasts. <sighs> I might mount the breasts <laughs> and hang them in my office. <laughs> yeah, that's all that's left of it. Oh, that's awesome. I don't get to see any of this too, folks. This is radio. You're like, they've got a computer face in there. I'm looking at mine trying to keep this stuff running. And they're looking at stone boobies. So that's awesome. This, this is this is the top quality entertainment that you get on The Naked Zombie. At least nothing's changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just so I'll let you know, um, on Australia Day, on the 26th of January, um, the Southern Queensland uh, Bike Club, uh, I will send more details up on the website. I have in their bike and tattoo show, which I'll be emceeing, emceeing and the boys will be doing there. So I've got to get up on stage and do my thing, um, which is I don't know how it's going to work because seriously, I'm going to stand in front of a huge horde of big bikies and 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 try and not get beaten up. So this is going to be beat him, beat him, beat him. <laughs> he'll be, he'll be no, broadcasting no. from inside well, the cage. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm going to have to do Yeah, anyway, so I've got to go and see a bike show, which is going to be interesting, um, to say the least. And uh, looking forward to that. So I'll put more details up before then. I'll actually go and get Southie, uh, who's one of the organisers of this. 
uh, Steve, and he's going to come in and do a bit of a chat about the, the, the Bike and Tattoo show, um, and I'll put it up there as well so they'll come in before it happens and never give all the information. So if you're in Brisbane or surrounds, please come and check it out if you're into that sort of thing, because I am. Um, even though I wear big, thick rim glasses and, and not really what you call... Yeah, I yeah. like that stuff. I think it's awesome. I love ink. Ink's awesome. Well, you, you've got ink. You're yeah. covered in it. I'm only allowed one tattoo. <laughs> yeah, I got that before I was married. I'm and not allowed any more. Is it a wear off one when I stick on oh, one? I've still got it, sir. Look. Yeah. We're radio. Ooh, ooh, spunky. Yeah, it's good for radio. Yeah, it was. Um, and so, yeah, very good. So, that's, uh, uh, we've, so we've had two stories tonight. One was on stone boobies and the other one was, what was the other one? I forgot. Yeah, it was in, inadvertent porn on the news. Yeah. Inadvertent pornography on the news. So we've had two uh, How about a doggy? nude stories so far in the space of ten minutes. <laughs> good stuff. What about a dog that's... eats cannabis and gets stoned? I was going to say, what was that other one? This is just, what news are you pulling up? This not, not man, in, man in poo for farting at work. What? How did that make the news? Man in the poo for farting at work. You really want me to read that one? <laughs> oh, let, let Liam read that one. You go. You read that oh, one, Liam. No, Take it I'm just going to sit here and cry <laughs> silently to myself. <laughs> An American federal employee has been formally reprimanded for excessive workplace flatulence in a five-page letter outlining the dates and time he let rip. Who records that stuff? <laughs> I mean, uh, someone sitting there going, oh, he did one, 9.45. That's what I constantly get told at work at least once every three weeks. Um, what I get told at work is um, if you can't do the job properly, we'll get someone else in who can. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. This, oh, God, I'm all depressed now. Oh. The Maryland man, you know, mm-hmm. in a missive delivered on December the 10th, was accused of releasing awful and unpleasant odours in his Baltimore office, reports the smoking gun. Subject, the official reprimand. This is a copy of the letter he got. Mm. This letter constitutes an official reprimand, effective from the 10th of December 2012. I am recommending you for the following reasons. Charge, conduct... Recommending or reprimanding? Reprimanding. What did he say? Did he say recommending? Did you say reprimanding? You better listen back, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Conduct unbecoming a federal employee Specification On September the 7th, 2012 (laughs) And continuing You (laughs) Disrupted the work floor by Passing gas and releasing an unpleasant odour Discussion On May the 18th, 2012 Your supervisor During a performance discussion with you Discussed the fact that your co-workers were complaining About your flatulence in the workplace And went on to state It was the reason none of them were willing to assist you with work Consequently Referred you to the Employee Assistance Program For assistance And what could have been a medical problem That was affecting everyone in the module On July 17, 2012 I spoke with you in regards of you releasing bodily gases in the module during work hours. I asked if you could make it to the restroom before releasing the awful, unpleasant odour. I informed you that the smell from your being flatulent disturbed... Uh, that's the end of it, it's only a screen grab. I mean, this is just weird. Yeah, it's just... After several employees lodged complaints, the man, a Social Security Administrator employee, was accused of conduct unbecoming a federal officer and was told his uncontrollable flatulence has created an intolerable and hostile work environment for his co-workers. I think it just sounds like a good excuse. No, so I don't want to help him because he smells too bad. No. We're not really much on that. I've actually got a paranormal news. Well, it's not I really a paranormal news pa- here, but I thought that was funnier. Yeah, I'm just waiting for this to, to, to kick in. Oh, timeout request, not fair. Cheers, I hate that. Let's see if I can do it again. Hang on, hang on. You, you keep reading the news about farty pants and... No. <laughs> oh, hang on. That's about it, actually. It's Robot vomits so you don't have to. Yes, I saw that. I think I'm on the same page. You on news.com? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, on. I've seen also the uh, the stone boobies. I saw that. Yeah. Um, also the one about the, the gas one. And uh, we've also got... Oh, come on. This is painfully slow tonight. We should, I'll just put some silent music in here and stuff. You can tell we're first first one back. We've got nothing planned nothing as usual. Nothing's <laughs> organised. That's so why we're, we, we're expecting to come back and have like a whiteboard on the wall and you know, we could sit down. That's and the new studio. And... We are getting a new studio. August. 
August we move Remember into the, the whiteboard. And we can yes. we can or brainstorm right on the wall. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or alternative. Yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah Nico, so Nico on the white paint. It's all good. Right. Yeah. So Contact. August, August, we're moving to new studio, and that's so, another thing. Okay, I just want I'm to going on holidays in August. So I don't have to help him move. If you love the the zombie, if you love the the crap that we get to up on a regular basis, please go across to the uh, Facebook fan site, Naked Zombie Radio Facebook fan. Get on there and. Get that like button, you know. Um, we're doing well on that, but, you know, always more the merrier. And also, don't forget to tell your friends about us. If you like the show and you think they'll enjoy listening to... What am I saying? No, I wasn't listening. Sorry. <laughs> stone stone <laughs> boobs I, I, I and farting at work. Yeah. <laughs> so if you enjoy listening to the show, let's just carry on for about an hour or so. Look, get them on board, get them across and get them to check it out because we'd love to have more and more listeners. Uh, we, we do well, but, you know, we'd, we'd love to get the uh, the nakedness out there and do it. Uh, we also want to know, we are also getting back into doing investigations. We are. Proper investigations. We're going to go back and do proper paranormal investigations. We're not going to make a big song and dance act out of it, like I always say. We're not going to do that. But we want to go out and we want to check out places. You know, we, we've, we've got some. We've had some cool locations last year. We went to, and I've still got to finalise getting our, all the video up. We're not looking at videotape or anything. We're more inclined to probably voice record it and put it as part of the radio show. So if you have a premises out there that you think would make an exceptional. Um, investigation and you're happy for us to come out there and voice record everything like interview you voice record it give us our experiences during the night and what we happen what we go through and what's he screaming to carry on please get in contact us you go to brad at brad scott.com email me or email liam or whoever you want to and let us know because we want to get out there and check out your place if it's a private home or anything, well, I'm happy to go and do those again because they're a lot of fun. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so we're not going to come armed out with gizmos and gadgets so the cows come home. We're not doing that. Just the basics, but we would like to come out and check it out. And I've really got a problem with my internet at You have. So that's it. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to spend a bit more time getting out in the public and in local mum and dad places and stuff. Or, or still pubs, clubs, yeah. So any, any place. And we think? still have, yeah, after the few that really awesome places we did last year, we've still got a few up our sleeve we've that we haven't done yet. We've still got a few up so. our sleeve we haven't done yet that we're looking into. But we're going to get out there and put on the radio show for you guys to have a listen to. So that would be a lot of fun for us. And for you guys, because you yeah. get to be on the zombie as well and share the love and all the rest of it. Here we go. Here's here's the new story. He's oh, trying to open up. God, it's a video. Oh. Hang on, hang on. I'll just I'll just wait till it loads. This is this is quite cool. Okay, we got we got to play this for you now, and you can have a listen to this actual news report. And it's still loading. Bloody hell! Yeah. Blue, you right? Yeah. No, you can't go. Is it going to go? Is it going to start? Yeah, it says that. Yeah. I need to leave. Oh, what? Oh. Is it now? You got an ad. So you have vomiting episodes. And it's stopped. <laughs> it's frozen. <laughs> Hang on. It's coming. I'll try again. Right? And you think I'm a bad news reader. You have uh, vomiting episodes and diarrheal episodes and particularly violent vomit. <laughs> and it's stopped again. <laughs> Hang on. I'll just wait till it. Uh, well, we'll just talk until it fully loads up, and then I'll play this actual thing about the vomiting robot. Hang on. Police are used to dealing with suspects who carefully cover their tracks, but sometimes solving a crime is a little more simple. When officers picked up Stuart Gibbs hiding in the shed of a house he was intending to, to burgle, they checked his phone for any potential clues. They could hardly believe their luck when they saw a message sent to a f- friend two hours earlier, which said, "I've told you twenty times, don't ring me when I'm out robbing." The 24-year-old father of two was jailed for 18 months after admitting attempted burglary. He pleaded guilty to a string of other offences, including dangerous driving, driving when disqualified, holding stolen goods and possessing cannabis. The court, no, no. The court was told <laughs> the, <laughs> house, the officer were called to the house in after neighbours reported seeing two men in the garden. They arrived to find nothing and had, taken, had been taken, but a back door window had been smashed causing about six hundred worth of damage. And he's hiding in the shed with a phone that says, don't, that, don't ring don't me when I'm out robbing. That's awesome. That's one smart burglar. That's, that's brilliant. Don't ring me while I'm out robbing. Yeah. And, and cannabis may have been involved. Yeah. Which is probably, why, cannabis was probably why he didn't put his phone on silent. Just, just putting that out there. There's always someone in the world that disappoints me. <laughs> it's not my phone. 
I fun. remember seeing that years ago when they used to do like Australia's Most Wanted of you know crimes that hadn't been solved. Yeah. And during one of the excerpts that they'd shot, they borrowed some old cars, like an FJ Holden or yeah. something, to shoot the reenactment. And during the shooting, somebody stole the car. So they stole the car <laughs> being used in a reenactment about. Oh, the car being, being stolen. stolen and they finally recovered the car but when they recovered the car there was a denim jacket sitting on the back seat with a guy's mobile and wallet in it okay. and it belonged to the guy who'd stolen the car that's like people that take photos of themselves with a stolen camera and then put the film in to be developed yeah. and we had film and or left the film in the car with digital right. photos of uh, themselves are you guys ready for this? Well, we were last time. Vomiting over, 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 over it now. Yeah. 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 That, that was, that was ten minutes ago. Boy, it's yeah. so last year. Yeah. <laughs> so you have uh, vomiting episodes and diarrheal episodes, and particularly violent vomiting episodes or projectile vomiting. And during these projectile vomiting episodes, you end up with a lot of aerosolized, very tiny, invisible particles of vomit that can spread very long distances. And these individual droplets of vomit contain enough viruses to infect many, many people. The health and safety labs in Buxton in the UK have been using a very interesting piece of apparatus, and they call this guy Vomiting Larry. This is an anatomically correct model for the vomiting episodes that you would, uh, you would experience when you get an oral virus infection. And this has allowed them to study how the virus survives in the environment and how the surfaces that you would vomit onto can affect the distance by which this vomit would spread. So somebody is um, studying... Oh, 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 someone is studying how projectile vomit spreads. Projectile vomit. <laughs> vomit. <laughs> I can just imagine there's some robot creator out there going, I swear, yeah. like, this is so important <laughs> to my research. It's got nothing to do at all with well, me just wanting to make going, a vomiting if, robot. If you want to Google, have a look at the vomiting robot. What's his name? Larry the Vomiting yeah, vomit the vom- robot. Vomiting Larry. We're actually watching it. There's actually, like, this head, this robotic head, and it shoots out this... Proje- Man, have we just sunk to an all-time low? I, th- I yeah. think so. I, yeah, mean, I look, couldn't most, beat that. I don't think I can beat that. Most most shows, radio shows, wouldn't stoop to this level of entertainment, but we have somehow managed to. But did you hear about the uh, drunk airline passenger who was duct taped? I saw seat? the photos. I think last night. It's duct taped amazingly. Him? Yeah, he was duct taped to what? A seat. A seat. A, a, a passenger. Put them handcuffs. He he essentially got on the plane and drunk through his entire duty-free amount worth of alcohol in, I think, the first hour of the flight <laughs> and then decided that he didn't like another passenger, so it would probably be a good idea to strangle the passenger. Okay. So they managed to zip-tie his arms and legs together, but he was still going, so they got a thing of duct tape Tape and taped him, duct the taped him to his seat. I miss college. No, this is a... I know, but this, it's a college trick. This is something, like something your boy would do. No. <laughs> My boy wouldn't do that. <laughs> Again? Nothing, no, nothing like that. Oh, yeah, guess what? I, I realised something. I went out metal detecting, right? I went out metal detecting. Oh, metal detecting. Yeah, yeah. Went out, I took me, 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 me mine lab metal detector out, and it was really cool. I had a ball. Me and the some rusty nails. And oh, I found a few weird things in that, but what really pops. what really, conf- what really concerned us was we're, we're, we're sort of metal detecting in a way, and Got this, got this hit, you know, at the beach we're at. Anyway, I started digging up, and it's a freaking big hole, eh? Because these these mine labs just keep going yeah. and going. So I'm digging away, I'm digging away, and this hole is literally like two foot deep now. I'm going, oh god, this, you know, I'm getting knackered. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that's the only exercise I've had in a while. So I dig this big hole, and I hit this um, mesh. Rio? No, no, no. We're talking fiberglass mesh that was taut, tight. And stop erosion. Yeah, I know, but there was something underneath the mesh, and and like and it was hollow underneath the mesh. You you push down it, you there's not sand under there, and there was Rocks. something. Oh god, there was something under the mesh, right? And I'm pressing it. I'm thinking, what if there's a body under this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, metal detector is really going to pick up a body. No, no, well, it could be someone's ring, you know. <laughs> so I, I looked at this mesh going because I cleared it all away. I looked at this mesh going. 
do I cut this open or not? <laughs> <laughs> do I stick my hand down in this <laughs> hole and see if I can grab something that I shouldn't? And the old man's looking at me going, no, just cover it back in. <laughs> so we covered the hole and walked away briskly. There you go. That was my exciting story. That's a bit that? of exercise for you. What's that? Digging the hole. Oh, God, mate, you have no idea. I'm getting yeah, old. He'd be a good council worker. Dig a hole, fill it back hey, in again. That's an idea. I'm going, to, I'm going to work for the council. Yeah, dig there a hole go. and fill it back in again. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. That's a good idea. Yeah, great. Wow. I can see you being a lollipop hey, person, actually. Hey, this is, um, what? Hey, this is, this is cool. It's about, it's about, it's about our good mate. Who? Jesus. Where? No, I'm serious, serious, look. Jesus has made his second coming in time for Christmas. Albert during an international darts competition at a British seaside resort. Well, at least many wanted to believe it was the birthday boy. Alas, it was bearded Australian Nathan Grindle, whose appearance dis- uh, disrupted a television final of darts competition in Mineland, 300 kilometres west of London. Mr Grindle was enjoying a clash between former world champion Phil Taylor and a Bavarian rival Kim Hybuskis, I think, when the audience unexpectedly began chanting, Stand up if you love Jesus. <laughs> um, Mr. Grindle's long, long blonde locks and his beard apparently convinced some of the, uh, the Bolton Resort that Minehead Somerset, it was Jesus sitting among them in the audience and was chanting, grew more disruptive. Security was called and asked Mr. Grindle to leave. You see a photo of this guy, man. Seriously, he looks like Jesus. He's, He's got, got it's well awesome. Done, yeah. yeah, you got the photo there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cool. Organised, recognised the Australian who moved to the UK six years ago had done nothing wrong, but his presence was causing the disturbance. Thirty-three-year-old oh. <laughs> escorted by security to another bar and bought a pint of beer, and he was forced to watch the finals clash from a TV. I didn't go to the darts dressed as Jesus. I went as me, and it was very weird and distressing. Mr. Grindle said, uh, who began growing a beard four months ago. After competition, Taylor said, I've never seen Jesus again. I'll crucify him myself. Oh, <laughs> that's not, oh, that's not good. good. No, that's oh, Mr. Taylor geez. said. Yeah, that's not good. Mr. Grindle said he was very hurtful. So it was all very hurtful and he wanted to fearful and never attend the live darts match again. Organisers defended their actions, saying that his presence was causing a, a nuisance for the players, but conceded that the four-point pitches of beer they were selling had encouraged the boisterous crowd to create... An apparition. Four so, point oh, pitches. Say, how big four, are these bloody dude, pitches? Four point pitches. If you don't know what a point is, I know what a point is. You're friggin' huge. Yeah. You've got four point pitches. Well, I mean, a standard it's a jug. A standard it's, it's jug like of a, beer is four pots. It's a fish pots. tank. Yeah. And a pot's only half. Yeah, Half a it's, pint. It's, it's equivalent of of drinking out of your mum's fish tank. You know the big one with the goldfish in. So yeah. with the, yeah, the those pitches are that's twice the size of a standard beer jug. So we've had some really that's cool like stuff. Hey? German Stein. Yeah, it's massive. Yeah. Surely one <laughs> person wasn't drinking those. And and we got a, we got a, another great Australian story for you here. Now look, see the people who Didn't listen you to the text rescue on City Street. No, Mankini golfer, my face charge. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the original story. I'm, I'm just looking at it and thinking that is so wrong, so wrong. Oh God, the things we do in this country. Seriously. Oh, well, anyway, well, we'll bring it up. Don't open the picture up. I just no, open the picture up. No, and I'm I've scarred just, for life. I, I've just seen it. Okay, this. Okay, it's, uh, Darwin Golf and McKinney reported Angus RAAF bosses. <laughs> A golfer who took it... Uh, OK. The Northern Territory's mischievous man, Kenny Golfer, is now facing legal trouble, one of, the, one of his best mates said. The scantily clad man turned heads when he played around at the RAAF Darwin Golf Club, wearing just a green thongs and golf shoes while swigging a stubby... Well, he had golf shoes on. He was yeah, it was a start. I mean, there's nothing there. It looks like he shaves, too. Uh, <laughs> his cheeky antics have angered RWF bosses, the Northern Territory News reports. Uh, while police told the NT News no formal complaint had been lodged yet, many outraged Territorians have their threatened their press charges. NT News Facebook followers were far from impressed with the golfing chap's antics. Um... That's very nice. <laughs> he should I be like charged. You like me? Exposure said, uh, Rachel Watts, uh, Debbie Neat said the man's dress code was totally disgraceful to the game. How disgusting he could not have been allowed to play without proper attire, <laughs> said Jennifer Fitzgibbons. And um, whoever said golf was a gentleman's game was not been to this place. 
Yeah, see, look, definitely a man. It, it, uh, seriously, that's that's. Go, I, I want to get this guy on on the show. As long as he stays on the other side of the world. No, no, yeah. seriously, <laughs> yeah, you phone it in. Yeah, phone it in. Oh, I I want to get this gentleman on the show. To be brave to, enough to wear a mankini. If he's if this guy is co- cool enough in my eyes to wear a mankini while playing golf in Northern Territory, I want to get him on the show for at least a ten minute chat. Looking and at find the photo, out. that's barely even a mankini. Mm. Uh, that's that's a project for you, buddy. You up for that? So oh, you can check I'll, this, I'll see if I can track, track him this down. guy down. And if you know who this uh, uh, um, man candy wearing golfer is, love to get him on the show for ten minutes and have a chat and and just talk about. It. I think that's cool. That's just that's, awesome. Um, that's that's awesome. Yeah, it's um. He doesn't care, yeah. eh? Hey? He's got this. No, he's he's uh, playing golf in a mankini, yeah, which doesn't right. restrict his swing in any way, shape, or form. Hey, um, did you know that? Also, just quickly before we have a quick break, that um, China detains doomsday doomsday believers for propaganda. I did see that. It was a hundred or a hundred and fifty of oh, them or was, something. People it was, panicking. It, it was hundred. Uh, Chinese police have d- detained hundred and one people, among them members of the fringe Christian group, for spreading rumours the world the world's impending end. I know it was sort of been and gone now, but this has just come out. Uh, the state run ex- <laughs> ex- <laughs> I freaking hate this. Xinhuan news agency reported it's not easy, today. Is it, Brad? The police con- uh, confiscated leafless DVDs and other ap- apocalyptic pap. <laughs> it's not easy, is it, Brad? It's very easy. I'm not like you. No. All Brad. right. Uh, apocalyptic propaganda. <laughs> Bite me, doughboy. boy. Uh, in the recent arrests in eight provinces across China, the detentions came ahead of Friday's 21st of December. Yeah, we've been done that. A date some say the Mayans prophesied would end the world, and which the subject of the apocalyptic 2009 movie 2012, starring John Cusack and Thadeen Newton. So there you go. That's um, and did you? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta play this for you. Have we got any hate this mail was a yet message. On Facebook. Hey. Have we got any hate mail yet on Facebook? Oh, we, we've always got hate mail, dude. Seriously, look, people just, people just. We actually, oh, I gotta play this for you now. This was a message from our prime minister regarding the world is coming to an end. Julia Gillard, our prime minister, who happens to be. Our Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for the load up. So as it comes through, this is actually taken from... She's actually done this. Yeah, it's real legit and real. And oh, well, serious. Oh, yeah. God, this, yeah. is, this is crap. It's taking sound on the load. Have you, can you get it on your computer there? Uh, hang on. You prick on the end of the world. There's a thing yeah. down there. It's probably quicker than mine at the moment. Where are we? China. There's a video China down there. Doom's Day, yep. There's a video down the world with uh, Julie Gillard on there. Do our our really beloved Prime Minister. Hey? Do I really want to see that? Yeah, yeah, I've heard it before. It's really funny. Mm. She talks about the zombie apocalypse as well. Does she? Yeah. We could do her to do the paranormal show. I think so. I wonder if we can get her on the show. What's what we should start doing? We should get like famous Australians on the show. They probably won't. But <laughs> <laughs> that's good in theory. No, so look, this is where we need. Well, at least we'll get a, a letter signed by them saying they won't, and we'll get a signed autograph letter. We would get a letter saying they will not appear on our show. I'd be stoked. Yeah. Or what would be even better if they came on the show? An email. Or we should handwrite a letter so they have to like one back so we don't put an email address on it. There's a thought. Yeah, mm. see? See, this, this is where, what we want our audience listeners to do. We want to get some really cool guests on the show. Like we, we've interviewed some fantastic people. Do with the paranormal stuff like But I also want to get other celebrities on the show. They may not be involved in because we do a pop culture as well. We deal with other crap. <laughs> we want to we get, do a lot of crap. <laughs> we do a lot of crap. We want to get some people on the show that would make interesting, even if it's for 10 minutes or so. Let's see if we can't get our listeners out there to give us a hand. And try and help spread the word that we're gonna get some some special guests on the show. It'd be mm. really cool to have some, you know, like some really nice talent come on. Yeah. Actors, you know, even if it's ten minutes out of the day, and I'll pre-record it at two o'clock in the morning if I have to. I'll do that. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe. This is taking forever, dude. Yeah, this is sad. Anyway, I'll, I'll try and get it up ready for next 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 episode. Session. Yeah, I'll get it up. It's yeah. really really quite funny. Oh, hang on. Uh, New speakers plugged in. Uh, that's all here. Lights on. No one's home. Does it come through? No. 
The internet is really slow tonight. It's been so good. It has been absolutely brilliant. Australia's best and brightest CSI. Oh, oh, you're broken it now. Yeah. Right. Brad, yeah, work, Brad. Try it again. And our message from our Prime Minister. I was going to say, yeah. take it back to the start. Yeah. And all. Triple G, end I of the world show. Fellow Australians, the end of the world is coming. It wasn't Y2K. It wasn't even the carbon price. It turns out that the Mayan calendar was true. While Australia's best and brightest at the CSIRO have not been able to confirm this, I'm confident in Triple J's prediction that the world is about to end. Whether the final blow comes from flesh-eating zombies, demonic hell beasts, or from the total triumph of K-pop. If you know one thing about me, it is... Stopped. Oh. Uh, the world band, ended. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I'll, I'll actually play the. I'll get the full thing up and I'll play. Yeah. It. I'll have to get permission of Triple J first. See if they let us well, play it. We're going again. Oh. And at least this means I won't have working? to do Q and A. No. Yeah, to stop again. Now I'll get permission to get Triple J. See so if I can get a copy of that. See so if I can put it on the show. So that's good, Julia Gillard. You can YouTube it uh, as well. So that's. Um, yeah, so that's really cool. So we're going to go for a quick break right now because obviously we've got nothing at the moment. Uh, we've, oh, actually, we're coming up to nearly the end of the show anyway. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go and take a quick break. We'll be back after the short I, message. Story here, so yeah. The Naked Zombie. And we are back. You are listening to the only radio show program that will turn your nana into axe-wheeling homicidal sexy maniac <laughs> now the naked zombie i am brad scott and of course join me tonight we're going to go another 10 minutes or so to go tonight guys because we've got so much on at the moment is liam and wadsey now we're just having a bit of a chat during our little um power power wow we have these little power wows because really we have nothing when it comes to we're doing the brainstorm. show <laughs> we brainstorm uh we are actually going to go on a yeah we hunt um as well we're talking about that we're going to go one night down the scrub we're going to go looking for the mythical yowie yeah, 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 that yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, and we're not going to be dressing Wadsy up in uh, the a mankini. Man, I don't know. See, we've got to get the mankini man on. The mankini golfer. Hey, we've got to get him on. Yeah, we'll use him we use him. He could be bait. You just could. set him, set him loose in the forest, and see what happens. Oh, I think he might scare the yowie, wouldn't he? We'll, we'll send him like far away and get him to walk <laughs> back towards us, and yes. flush, flush the yowies out in that, our direction. That that will work for me. So that really good. works for you. So there we go. Um, so we're going to do that. And you had a quick yeah, last tiny one. Yeah, town in the North Queensland. The yeah. This is from the uh, 3rd of January this year. A tiny town in North Queensland is on full UFO alert following sightings of strange lights in the night sky. Carball businessman Greg Smith said he, he and his son watched the lights for 15 minutes and are convinced that what they saw was some sort of UFO. This was a couple of months ago. I used to be the world's biggest sceptic about this stuff. But I tell you what, this really rattled me and my son, he told the Townsville Bulletin. Mr Smith said watch, they watched the lights from the front of the Lindock Motel on the highway towards the northern end of town. There were two orange, very large orange lights. There was no beam, no noise. It was absolutely silent. And they were moving slowly across the sky towards the northwest. We couldn't tell if the lights were from one or two machines. At first, we thought they were over the buildings between the highway and the beach, but other people said they were just over the water. Mr Smith said he thought it must have been two helico- one or two helicopters, but discounted the possibility due to the fact that there was no noise. Another Carball resident, Phil Mully, and his wife Helen saw the lights on two consecutive nights. We thought it was a chopper coming up the channel. We watched it for five, a few minutes and then it disappeared in a cloud. The next night my sister rang me and said to look outside. I went and looked and there were two, two lights. We watched them for a while until they disappeared in a cloud, he said. Mr Mully said he, he knew of at least six or seven people who saw the lights. President of the UFO... <coughs> Do you mind? I'm reading. Yeah, right, keep going. President of the UFO Research... Queensland, Cheryl Gottschall said she could not say what the lights were, but added she had no qualms in saying there were extraterrestrials which visit Earth from time to time. 
I've been with this organisation for 25 years and in that time I've spoken to 3,000 people who have seen strange lights and objects and to another six to 700 who have had close encounters, she said. Well, I've got a story here for you that's come hot off the presses. It's an it. actual news report of a real-life UFO a kid found. You want to hear it? They found. Found. They found. Ready to be amazed at the awesomeness that is this crap. Remember the movie E.T.? We all love that movie, right? The little kid who befriends an alien from outer love space. That movie. Well, today we have a young man right here in our studio who actually found his own E.T. while he was on vacation with his family. Say hello to 11-year-old Thomas Deming from Duluth, Minnesota, and his magical friend. Hi, Thomas. Hello. Good morning. This is such an exciting story. How did you find this little guy? Well, I heard some noises in, bush, in the bushes. Right? So I went out to see what it was, and I just found it. A wrinkled, hunched-up little brown E.T. It was so lost and confused, and it was talking really fast in its space language, like beep boop <laughs> I just knew I had to That's help great. it. Oh, that is so sweet. So you oh, snuck it back home, and you hid it in your closet for how long? Three weeks. Wow. I fed it Reese's Pieces so it wouldn't Ay, get hungry. Good thinking. Wow. Tengo que a mi oh, I wish I could understand favor, you, little buddy. <laughs> favor, tengo que Thomas, your parents had no idea you had this little guy hidden away under your sweaters. Yeah, but one day my dad heard him making these crying sounds. Uh -huh. I think maybe that's how it breathes because oh. it cries all the time. Were you worried oh. then that your parents might make you send it back That's... to its home planet? Yeah, That's but right. then I showed them how I taught it some English. Oh, cool. And they were really impressed. Oh. Do you want to hear some English? Sure, oh, we love absolutely. E.T., English. English. Phone home. Oh, look at that phone home, just like in the movie. Oh, that's terrific. <laughs> that's wonderful. Uh, I wish I could talk people language more than just phone home. I don't understand. Dad says they have to hide it. So if I take it outside, I always put it in my dad's clothes, so it looks like a little me. What a great idea, yeah. I think you brought a photo with you, too. Let's... Oh, how cute! <laughs> yeah, E.T. was supposed to make my bike fly, yeah. right? but it didn't, no. so it fell off. Oh, how oh. It was really breathing really hard after that. Oh, he's doing the finger thing! Oh, he's doing the finger thing! Oh, he's doing the finger thing! Oh, oh, me, me trata como una esclava! No, 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 no! Sit! Sit! It's okay, little buddy. It's okay. It's too sick. Look at this. Tengo que volver a mi casa. Have some more of your Reese's pieces. Oh, good idea. Of You've got him so well trained. That's great. Uh, Reese's Pieces and... Thomas, what's he doing now? Oh, look at He's that. been doing that a lot lately. I think it's how it communicates with its home world. You know, Thomas, it must be just a tremendous responsibility to be taking care of your own E.T. all by your young self, right? Yeah, I guess. Well, maybe it would be a better idea if someone took care of it for you, and then you wouldn't have to worry anymore. What do you think? We've got friends here at Today Now, Thomas, that would like to come and just have a have a little chat with no. your ET. All they're going to do is just ask you some questions. No, no, it's my friend. Thomas, have a seat. Have a seat. Well, I guess we all learned a very valuable lesson about friendship today, didn't we? And stay with us because coming up after the break, we're going to ask the important question, do our dogs know enough about our founding father? <laughs> Only in America. Only in America. Basically, the story was you go to um, Google, uh, go on YouTube, look up news stories, kid finds real-life E.T., and this is poor um, Spanish woman. <laughs> she can't speak a word of English. <laughs> Oh, anyway, oh God, I'm dying. <laughs> anyway, that's that's the end of tonight's show. That's good. Until next week that's again. Good. Thank you. Look, don't forget, guys, jump on the Facebook fan site. Let us know what you think. If you want to hear any news stories or something like that, or if you want to touch on a particular subject, or you've got any contacts for famous people that we can harass, please get on uh, the website, go to the contacts page and let us know. Go to the website you now listen to the radio show through. And, of course, if there's a real job out there for... For, for, for the Brad, um, that doesn't involve me actually doing any physical labour um, or taking work. work, but pays me lots of money, I'm, I'm happy to take it off your hands and do it for you. How's that sound? And you get paid. I'll never then, make Then you get a bonus for actually doing less work. Yeah, a bonus for less work, yeah, and I'll be happy. For proving I'm doing less work. And that's it. That's it? That's it. We're done with Yeah, yeah we're done dusted for tonight's show, and we will be back each week for more entertainment and more other crap we're going with on the Naked Zombie. What would you like to say in closing? If it's on the net, it must be true. I think it's a new year. I think you should look for a new catchphrase, Duke. You think? I think you should well, research actually, one. Andrew sir, proved to me that if it's on the net, it's not always true. There you go. That's not much better. Anyway, Liam. It's a work in progress.
Yeah, I say bring on the yowies. Bring on the yowies. yowies. We go, yeah, we're going on a yowie hunt. And, of course, I'm Brad Scott. Don't forget, thank you, everyone, for taking the time listening to us and hope you have a fantastic and great 2013. We'll be back each week with more. I have no idea what this is. Form of entertainment. I, I really got nothing. It's some sort of form of entertainment. Yeah, I don't people. even know that, but we have fun doing it anyway. So I think have a we ran out of bum and fart jokes. <laughs> <laughs> bum fart booby jokes. That's booby, all we do. Booby bum and fart and jokes. Vomiting stories and and little old ladies who think they're ET. And have a good night, safe night, everyone. And please look after each other and be safe. I'm Brad Scott, and you've been listening to the Naked, Naked Zombie. Zombie. Yeah. See you all. Yeah. See ya.